Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we have the most dangerous woman in the world, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. How are you, Mimi? Great. How are you, Mark? I'm good. I'm good. We've got, I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Hi, Tate. Hey, hey everybody. Of course, the nightcap meister, completely sober, Scott Bossman. Always, except for Wednesday nights at 1030. Except for Wednesday nights at 1030. <laughs> no, so, okay. Uh, we've got the technician, Eric Peterson. What's up, Eric? Not much. Just hanging out with you guys. It's, it's always a great day when we can all hang out. All right. We got the Bearland Aaron. Bearland, how are you? Hey, doing well. Great. How, are, how is everybody? All good. It's yeah. all good. Good. And last but not least, you know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, the mini bat, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. Most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. But I got my blood pressure up this afternoon because Scott Bossman's deal has got me a little, <laughs> uh, a little, uh, what's, I don't know. It's like a combination of like anxious and hangry, like that feeling. All so right. Well, I can't wait to hear about it. Let's discuss it. So Scott, walk us through this real life scenario. All right, so I had a pretty interesting uh, situation here in the last week. Uh, well, started uh, two weeks ago. I took a, guy, took a call at boot camp, actually, from a guy who was interested in selling his property. I had offered him around $1,000 for his one-acre property. And he was really thrilled that I'd contacted him. He had, he's owned the property for 35, 40 years and claims he's never gotten an offer on his property before. He's in his, he's in his 80s. He said, this couldn't have come at a better time. We're, took, we're looking to offload this property and I have a couple other properties. And the reason he called me was because I'm from Wisconsin and he had lived in Wisconsin. So we had a great conversation. You know how you get on the phone with, with people sometimes and uh, you, know, you just like to talk to them. Uh, that's part of the fun of the job. So we, we had a good 20 minute conversation, not only about his property, but about his life in Wisconsin and where he lived and where I live and what we do and, and all that. We even had a couple of uh, physical therapy uh, questions. So, um, so we established a really great relationship. I told him, we, you know, we'd go through the preliminary due diligence and, and uh, do the deal uh, likely in the next week if everything came up okay. So, you know, my offer was $1,000. Comps in the area are maybe $4,000 cash. Um, so uh, a week went by. He needed a couple phone calls because he wasn't quite sure of the process, but, you know, all said, you know, I'm, I'm about an hour into this deal, plus my due diligence and all that on the side. And he decides to purchase from me. So uh, he gave me a call Friday, kind of in a panic, because he said he, he said he was going to be on the way to the bank to get the deed notarized. And that day, he received another offer for $2,000 for the property. So... Uh, my heart sunk a little bit because I really wanted this property, got a little nervous. And I just went with the, you know, went with the flow. We had another great conversation. I, I explained to him what we do and how I thought that offer was a little bit high. Uh, and uh, how, you know, uh, I would, I'd really like to take this off your hands. So can, can we, can we settle on $1,200? And he thought that was fair at the time. So I uh, got off the phone thinking that he was going to go through with the deal. Turns out he called the other party and they, uh, they sold him on the $2,000 price. So I had a discussion with him again yesterday. And uh, he, he said, Scott, I'm really sorry. I've really enjoyed our time together, but I'm going to go with this other offer. I can't, I can't not let it go. Uh, well, all said and done. I talked him into $1,750. The only reason I agreed to that price is because I already have a buyer on the line. 
um, who I told him it was on agreement. He gave me the 250 document processing fee. Um, so got a buyer on the line and the numbers make sense. But it, it brought a whole new challenge to this uh, in the last few days because uh, number one, um, I had to renegotiate <laughs> uh, to keep the property. Uh, although it helped to have that relationship with him. Number two, he was confused because the offer letters were very similar uh, and uh, he had never gotten any offers before. So that's the story. All right. Well, it's kind of an interesting one. And you, and you know, the other party that was making, I know who the, I know who the other party is. Um, yes. uh, so, and, anyway, and hopefully they're not a coaching client or a flight school <laughs> client because they're, they're, <laughs> their offers too high. Right. Right. Their offers too high based on the area. So, you know, this points to the, to the importance of County research as well. Right. Right. So Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I don't know. As, as Scott's telling that story, you know, I, part of me feels like, um, you know, that seller, if he signed my agreement at 1200 or whatever it is, and uh, he's going to turn around and accept someone else's offer after that, I mean, I'm not too happy about that to begin with. I mean, honestly, um, I would probably have a real upfront conversation with him telling him we had an agreement, you know, I've done all this work and, uh, you know, we need to move forward with, with what we agreed on. I, I think I would have been kind of upset. Um, and I, I just don't know if I would have continued with it, honestly. I mean, uh, to me, but, it's but Eric, he's got like a buyer. A, yeah, I know he's got a buyer, and and that's the hard part, right? Because in my mind, you know, that's an ethical problem I have with this seller, is that you know, again, assuming he had a signed agreement and everything, um, you know, he's he's going back on his word, and that that gets to me. Um, so, I it's hard to say without being in that situation how I would have handled it, honestly. Hmm. The only reason I took it was because I had a buyer and uh, yeah. Fred and I had established a relationship. Like this guy's a nice guy, right? And then he's pulling he, at my art string. Scott, he ain't that nice. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you. If he's a nice guy, he would have stuck with the, the agreement he made. Yeah, you, you are correct. You are correct. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's, he ain't that nice of a guy. <laughs> uh, he ain't that nice. Bearland, Aaron, what would you have done? Well, why don't you come back to me? I had a technical difficulty and just got back on. I'd like to hear somebody else's. All right, let's let's go to somebody that doesn't live in Amish country. Ruby <laughs> Schmidt. So I kind of had this happen just in general. I was in my Florida market. I was paying between eighteen hundred and three thousand dollars for property. And a woman sent out a mass mailing offering $6,000 for the properties. It basically put me out of, out of business in that market, truly. Um, honestly, Scott, I think I'd call that investor and say, hey, and talk to them about their due diligence process and say, hey, you, you can actually get your property for a little cheaper than this. And everyone listening, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to find what – Local investors are paying in the area. If you can get the sales data, do a search for, for owners that end in LLC. Go see what they're paying for the property. It's not that tough. If you don't have the data, um, you can look online. Individual, find, um, find a couple of competitors and look online do it individual property searches and see what people are paying wholesale for these properties. Um, yeah, because you can get them for, for cheaper and that just makes your profitability on the, on the land deal better. And it, in general makes it better for our market and all of us investors. So I think Scott, I, I call the guy and talk to him about his due diligence. He can save himself some money in the future. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tate? 
Who no. are you thinking? <laughs> Scott. <laughs> uh, hey, Tate, you're on mute. There there we go. Sorry. I I agree with what everybody else has said. I'd be a little upset about it, but, um, you know, had I not already had a buyer lined up with the guy, I probably would have told him, you know, if you can go get more money elsewhere, good luck. But I got cash in hand today to pay you. And I'd also let him know that there's a lot of people out there who are going to make high dollar offers. But when it comes time to writing the check, they often get cold feet. And I'm an actor and I take action. When I decide I want something, I buy it immediately. And I think that's something that sets me apart from everyone else is I'm not afraid to buy this land. I'm not in this because it's fun or it's a hobby. I'm in this to purchase your property. So if he thinks he can go get money, a higher dollar somewhere else, well, then I understand that's what he needs to do. But when you come back to me and want me to buy your land, I'm not going to pay you the same price as I offered before. That's what I'd tell him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's the reality, though. That's the reality. What would you do? Well, uh, look, Scott's going to ding me. I know. I just have a feeling Scott's going to ding me. He's going to say that I tainted our market by buying the guy's property at seventeen (laughs) fifty. No, no. Here's here's the deal. I've I've ran into this problem where where somebody in my own flight school class mailed on top of me doubling the offer, right? Like I, I was like livid over it. Okay. And, but we had a buyer, we same situation. We had a buyer and I didn't double my offer, but I did come up like 50% and I was like furious over it. Like what the, but I, I had a, I had a, someone who was ready to buy the property. I knew it would sell and I'm like, just buy it, whatever, because now I own it and they didn't get it. Right. Now, that said, if I didn't have a buyer lined up or I didn't think that like I was going to sell it like tomorrow, then I would have told the guy to go pound sand. And the reason is, is because I would have said to him, hey, listen, here's the deal. I have cash in hand that's ready to come out to you tomorrow. Like I can literally, you give me a deed today, I can have you cash within two days. Within 40 hours, you'll, you'll be at the bank. If you accept this other guy's deal, he's going to have to start this whole process all over again. It's going to be weeks and weeks and weeks. And you know what? It's not going to happen. And I I actually had a situation like that. The guy actually had my deed in hand. He refused to sign it because he wanted another $150. And he was an attorney. And I told him, I said, no, you can go pound sand because uh, I'm not paying you another $150. This is the deal. And you've agreed to the deal. You told me to mail you the deed for signing, even though you had, um, even though you had uh, this other offer in hand, you told me you were going to go ahead with it and you didn't do it. And so basically, you know, like I never did it. Now, what's funny is, is that he told me who gave him the other offer. He told me the guy that gave him the other offer and I knew who it was. And I'm like, well, that guy is never, ever, ever going to, uh, that guy is never, ever, ever going to close. And I kid you not. He said, well, I'm going to go take it. And then you know what, Mark, the guy went on to the master or the, uh, the, the, the land geek mastermind call that day and basically said, Hey, um, guess what? I got a deal. Anybody want to buy it for me for like an, uh, so I make like a hundred dollars on the deal because he didn't have any cash. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, I, I know what I would do in the situation, Scott. Um, but before I tell you, uh, let's go to Bearland, Aaron Bearland. What would you do? Yeah, you know, I've run across it maybe a couple times. Um, I was able to buy from the person, um, I think, each time. But uh, one of the tactics is that, you know, explain to them that a lot of people were, are going to try to trade down. You know, they're using high offers um, to get high responses. And then once they do the dil- due diligence on the property, what they're going to find is that they need to uh, come back at you with a lower amount. And, um, you know, I explained that I'm like everybody else, I'm ready to buy it today. And, uh, I'm not necessarily going to do that. If the numbers don't make sense, I just simply won't be able to buy it from you. But, um, if they do, we're good to go, you know? And, um, I've 
pretty much had people tell me okay and since you know sometimes it's like uh you know since i was the first one that they accepted they're gonna stay with me that was somebody with some integrity um that sort of thing but you know i guess it can happen um and i think people might do that too because i'm you know sometimes when you're first starting off you might have a little bit high of an offer because you know you're worried you're not going to buy something and uh, once you've done it for a while you figure out that man there's so much out there you're gonna get so many accepted offers you know uh stay stay where you need to be you know um unless there was a mistake in the market research at the beginning um, which is possible too so it happens i guess yeah yeah i i, I mean and th that's the nice thing about this is that it's a really a rare occurrence right I mean, it's a big market. Uh, we don't see this happen a lot, but I will tell you that I know exactly what I've done, what I would do if th this was me. Number one, I'd go to the seller and say, look, we have, like, I would, I would be like what Eric said, like, like, look, we made an agreement, okay? Is the extra thousand dollars worth a loss of your own integrity that you're gonna go back on your own word? Like, I know if it was me, thousand dollars wouldn't be worth that to me to go to bed at night knowing that I spent an hour with this guy, we're from Wisconsin, I talked to you about physical therapy, and then all of a sudden, I'm thinking you're this, this nice guy, and all you care about is the money, right? We live in a civilized society, Fred. Is your word nothing? I'm is laughing. Nothing? I'm laughing because- I mean, I would be just- I don't think this would work. Beside myself. Work. And he's like, oh, you know, it's business. I'm like, no. If it's really just business, I can sue you. We have a verbal agreement. I'm not going to sue you over a thousand. He would see the guy would say, "Mark, you don't understand. A thousand dollars might be okay for you, but a thousand dollars is a lot of money for me. I'm an old man. I'm 80 years old. I really need everything." Exactly. I can. I'm like, you know what? In my wife, 80, 80, 80 years old. You're on that back nine, man. I don't want to do. I'm going to bed at night. <laughs> no one, no one. I'm living clean. Now that that being said, that being said. The second thing is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reverse it, right? Number, number two, right? I've done this in this own marketplace. I've given out high offers. And then you know what I do, Fred? I trade down. I find all the flaws during due diligence. I string you along 10, 14 days. I don't close at 2,000, right? Did you put a well in? Are there utilities, right? Oh, it looks like your neighbors are selling for 1,000. And then... I go back down and I renegotiate at a thousand dollars. You want to take that chance? Let me know. And then I'd hang up on him. Then I'd call the person that I know made the offer. And I'd say, look, I've got this guy. I spent an hour of my time and I have a buyer back off. You call the guy right now and say, I know that I sent you an offer for $2,000. It was wrong. My offer is 800. And hang up with that person. And I'd be on a conference call with that guy to make sure that he did it. This is a community. Does the community mean nothing? Is it all about money? Oh, what, look, what a rant. Listen, man, that's collusion. And like, you know, it's you can get an deep. auction, Scott Todd. This is not an auction. This is not a government <laughs> deal. Okay. <laughs> this is not collusion. Hey, Mark, can I? I want to tell you something though. This is pretty interesting to me because it's funny that Scott brought this up about like, you know, the fact that this guy's owned this, this land and Scott, is it a, is it a County that's popular with other land investors? Very. Okay. Sure, so, yeah. look, here's the deal. I was looking the other day in LG pass cause I was, I was running some numbers and I'm like, what is the number one County uh, that land investors are going to be? Because on land moto, it's, it's, it's like a large county, right? Like, I, look, the, I, I looked at it and like, there's a, there's a, by far, there's like one county that, uh, that we go to by and far. I think everybody that, that, that's doing anything with land investing probably knows what it is. That said, I went into LG pass. I'm like, Hey, let me take some APN numbers at random and let me run some analytics behind it to see how many offer letters people are getting that are being generated from LG Pass, which there's a lot of offer letters being generated from LG Pass, right? So I took, I took a number of uh, individual APN numbers. I probably took about 10 of them. And I randomly put them in to, to search to see how many offer letters they've gotten 
over the last two years. And do you know the, the maximum number that I saw was three, three offer letters per APN number over a two year period. Now this is in probably one of the most populated uh, or, or most land investor um, counties. Friendly. Friendly. Friendly right. county. Let's just say it's like, it's like the most competitive and it's not even competitive. The competitive. The, the top was three offer letters over two years. And so it just goes wow. to show you things. One, even though there's competition and we're all working in that same county, even though we're all there, guess what? We're still not pulling out all the gold. There's still lots of gold there. Two, it makes the point that I keep making. I make this in flight school. I make it in, in VIP rooms at boot camp. I keep saying the same thing. When, when more and more people are promoting properties in this one area, well, when other people who don't know look at it and like, holy cow, man, there's that area again. There's that area again. There's that area again. It's like the ultimate in like vacation marketing. When you see ad after ad after ad for like Hawaii and you see all the stars in Hawaii, where do you want to go on vacation? You want to go to Hawaii. So when you see, oh, here's another property in that area. Oh, here, all of a sudden it becomes the go-to place that people want to buy land in. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Yeah. So Scott Bossman, of all the roundtable responses, which one do you relate to the most? <laughs> Scott Todd. Scott Todd. I mean, I learned Mark doesn't have a heart. He's talking to an 80-year-old guy who, who just had, he just excuse had me, a 1700 The 80-year-old guy made a deal with me. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't have the heart? I Mark, just spent an you, hour you, with him. You know what my what you, an hour of my time kid, is? Though. Fred, I'm never getting this hour back. You know what it's like? You're 80. I did talk him down, to be fair. To be fair, I was going to go with 2,000, and I talked him down to 1750. And I, the old, I mean, like, like I said, I, I, I called the other investor, money. too. I, th I think you what you would have what Mark would have done is he would have been like, listen, man, you're 80. You're, you're knocking on heaven's door, and uh, <laughs> you're not going to have time to, like, make this up. I'm a young guy. I have many, many years to go at peace. So make the right decision. Right. Right. If this was your son and your son was buying a piece of land and someone did this to your child, what would you say? You say, boy, that seller really has no integrity. Let him go. But even more, you know what? I wouldn't even mess with him because you're, Scott, you're right. It would sound a little callous and, and cruel to like, start doing this to an 80 year old man, but I would go to the other investor and be like, next deal is yours. And you're, oh, by the way, your offer's way too high. That's what I would do. It's a community. Yeah, I think that's we, great. We all, we, all, we all support each other. Right? Scott, Todd, here. And, and I'm gonna make that investor uh, take me out to dinner as well. <laughs> Why, because you saved, you saved them? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. I mean, Eric, how, how long has it been since you stole that Colorado deal for me? I still haven't forgotten, right? It, you haven't forgotten, and it's been well over a year. It's been well over a year, and I'll still get deal flow from that. I don't have to deal with the seller. I can just go straight to Eric. He'll be like, you know? Eric, wholesale in the park. Wholesale. He'll wholesale to me. So we all can work together even if somebody, you know, takes a deal that I feel is rightfully mine. But it's not because Eric took it. Now it's his. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He didn't really take it from me. That's different. It's not, it's not like Eric came in with like this crazy high offer. He just had more patience for the seller than I did. It's fair. Indeed. I just like to haze him. Um, well, we're now at that point in the podcast where we get to put the terrorist hunter on the spot and ask her for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. I thought this round table was very lively. That was great. But alas, one last tip, and I'm going to stop streaming on Facebook so the Facebook people can actually go and listen to the podcast, download it, and hear their tip of the week. So I've been reviewing all of my expenses. I feel like I've got like 40 different accounts that I manage, right? So 
I, I, um, I found this website. It's called um, whitepages.com. It's just like Intellius, but instead of spending $19.95 a month, it's $4.99 a month. So $15 less offers the same service, but for $4.99, you get 20 lookups. For Intellius, is $19.95, you get unlimited. Okay? So it just depends upon how much you use it. If you use it, if you use Intellius only, you know, 20 times a month or less, then go over to White Pages and send yourself the money. It also does the phone reverse lookup too, in, uh, in addition to looking up the person's name. It has their email address, phone number, past addresses, all the same stuff. Relatives, all that. That's a great newbie tip too, because if they're not doing that, the mailing volume, that really can save them, uh, you know, a little bit of money, 15 bucks, you know, for uh, Bearland Aaron. That's like um, a nice dinner out in Amish country. <laughs> well, two of them. Or two of them, really. <laughs> you know, get some homemade cheese. It's great. If you go to a restaurant in Amish country, do you have to bring your own meat? Uh, no, they supply it. <laughs> you have to bring your own wine. You have to bring your own wine. You have to build a fire and cook it yourself. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, that's fair. I knew that was you a provide your okay, own. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, so our our marching band went to semi state this last weekend, and we are uh, following one of the buses, and the bus stops on a four lane highway, just in the middle of nowhere, no railroad tracks. We're trying to see around this thing. This bus driver stops so this horse and buggy could cross the four lane i mean just stops all the traffic it's like really like there's nobody behind us horse and buggy come on i got a picture i'll send it to scott todd <laughs> i'm making a prediction though i i think that in the, there's gonna be like this huge tech backlash and we're gonna see all these people instead of going to big cities for vacations and you know they're going to completely unplug in Amish country no cell towers right could could be a thing I don't know yeah. a lot of people will do that here in DC people places where there's right completely disconnect yeah I I think what you're describing That's Mark is the walking dead <laughs> the show <laughs> <laughs> We've yeah, the show. The zombies are coming, and when we lose all the cells and everything. Any you know, dystopic so science yeah. fiction. I, I was reading this uh, this Yuval Noah Harari book, 21 Lessons to the 21st Century, and you just had this beautifully written line, like, if you think that you're in control of your technology, you're not. He's like, technology's in control of you. He's like, they've hacked your mind, basically. And if you go out in the world, you see everybody like this. You know, it's like, we can't control it. It's just, they, they've hacked our mind. Um, brilliant. When we moved back from Japan in 2008, it was like culture shock. And we thought it was so bizarre. Everyone was walking around talking to themselves, right? They had things in their ears, but it just looked really weird. Sitting in the airports, people were just sitting in chairs talking to themselves. It was very strange looking. And we noticed that our family members would get up, the married couples, and they would check their phones before they even said, so, hey, how are you doing this morning? It was very strange, but it was very U.S.-centric. It wasn't so much like that on the little remote island that we lived on. So it was interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, Eric, I'm going to give you the final word, and now is your chance to you know, kind of take a shot across the bow at Mimi's tip of the week, since we're all hazing you. <laughs> Absolutely not. Her tip of the week was perfect, and uh, I'm sure she'll do a great job at the tips of the week from now on. <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> well, I, look, look how I lobbed that for you. That was just Thanks. perfect for you. Thanks. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I, Mimi's got to work it out for her for next week. Still, I think Mimi has to do it until someone else falls into the uh, rabbit hole. Of, oh, I got one. Oh, no. You yeah. can still swap like back and forth with Zeno, though. 
Okay. So don't forget about right. that. I'll check his schedule. Okay. And Jeannie's <laughs> taking the month off. She'll be back in December. So the, the go-giver <laughs> Jeannie Morum will be back. So um, are we good? We're good, Mark. We're good. We're good. Yep. All right. I, I want to thank all the listeners and just remind them the only way that we're going to convince Mimi to continue to do the tip of the week is if you do three little favors for us. All you got to do is subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. And if you have questions, today's flights, uh, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. And wouldn't it be great to get on the phone with the Nightcap Meister himself and maybe even convince him to say dude buddy to you? So buddy. all you need to do is go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with uh, Scott, the Nightcap Meister Bossman, or Mike, the Zen Master Zeno and learn more about the upcoming flight school. Scott, when is next flight school? Uh, you, Scott. Well, we, we have a Saturday one starting November 10th. Like, that's our first Saturday one. It's a Saturday morning. What better way to start a Saturday morning than with me hanging out? There really, there really isn't one, honestly. And then we I've start the after Thanksgiving. Yeah. In December. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So, Scott Bossman, are there still spots for that Saturday class? There are still spots available for the Saturday class, yes. All right. So, it's a great way to start 2019, get into uh, the Saturday morning flight school. And, again, I actually did IBM Watson, and I plugged in what is the best way to spend Saturday morning, and they said learning how to have total freedom via passive income in Land Geek Flight School with Scott Todd, who has done over 700 deals the last three years. There's no one better to teach you and take you up that land investing mountain. So it's math. I concur. Might as well do it. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody again, and uh, we'll see everyone next week. Thanks, everybody. Let freedom ring. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. I'm. You know what, Scott? I'll tell you, this, this whole thing has got me so riled up, I even forgot to let free the ring. <laughs> All right, ready? One, two, three. Let, uh, let free freedom ring. 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 I'm calling, I'm calling Fred as soon as uh, we stop recording here. I'll give you his number. <laughs> Would it make a difference if he was 70? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I would say no, it wouldn't make a difference because that would be ageism. It is ageism, right? <laughs> I think, no, it is, I think it's your ageism. Yeah, right, right. You're holding him to this moral okay. standing. Eric Peterson, are you with me on this? <laughs> Oh, it's because he's 80. He gets to just do whatever he wants now. He no, can break agreements. He can, he can run work. red lights. There's I a social contract all day, here. All day long, you he know. Can, he cannot be true to his word because he's 80. I don't think so. What kind of guy is he? Okay. Uh, I mean, Scott Todd <laughs> lives, lives in an area where, you know, he's like a... Everybody's 80. So... Oh. No. But they're Florida men. When you were in Fort Myers. Florida man. <laughs> when, when I was in Fort Myers, yes, I think I was the youngest guy around. But, well, <laughs> Eric was there for a while. So, you know, Eric was kind of like the younger guy. Yeah. yeah. I, feel like, I feel like Eric is like reversing. He's like, like, like Benjamin Button syndrome. Like every time <laughs> I see him, he's like younger. I don't what kind so. of stress-free existence is going on in Tennessee? <laughs> we might need to go oh, find out more. We might need to go. Serious, find out. Oh, seriously. seriously. Nashville boot camp. I'm all for it. East Coast. Woo. Uh, I don't know. About that. <laughs> 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 we love you, but we know you guys want to spend more time on the best coast. So we'll keep having boot camps closer to Hey, us. man. 
Listen, we, we might we might have to have a battle of boot camps, like East Coast versus West Coast. Like one weekend, we, we like have an East Coast one and a West Coast one to see okay. which one people get more. I mean, uh, the last time two of the most famous rappers did this, someone ended up dead. I don't know if we can, <laughs> I'm just can saying, handle this. <laughs> just saying, like, there, there can only be like you two and, you know, Bossman, Zeno, Eric, Mimi and myself, I mean, like, we're going to outnumber the East Coast side. It'll just be Tate and Mark. Wow. That's their problem, not ours. Yeah. That's why going to come to the East Coast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this could cause some serious contention and strife, and I think we should end the podcast now, Mark. Right? I agree. Not recording. <laughs> hey, what about the Great Lakes? Let's go to lunch. Uh, Everybody's go angry. <laughs> <laughs> Mackinac Island or something in the summer. Right. Come on. It, it's it's really getting the, the it's really getting out of control here. This is called like, This is becoming a Tupac Biggie problem. Turf, it's a turf war at this point, Mark. It's it has become a turf war. My bat's right, bigger than let, yours. Ooh. All right, let's take this oh, off. Boy. Thanks everybody. <laughs>